Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Welcome back to the channel. So, the intro you saw was from an amazing subscriber, one of you guys. If you're interested in that, please send me hello, amazing hackers, in any language that you speak in video or in audio clip to info at the xssred.com. Now, how to do that again will be in the description below, but let's talk a little bit about how to become a hacker in a year because that's a very short amount of time, but it's also very important to understand that we need to know what exactly is a hacker. What are we talking about here when we say hackers? And I've put together some, some core fundamental ideas that I think define a hacker, but I think this definition differs for everybody as well. In my core opinion, hackers are very creative. That's something that you'll find in almost every hacker and that's something I've seen in almost every hacker as well. And it can be in many different fronts. It's not just drawing, it's also creatively handling these bugs and vulnerabilities that you find. Um, we are always looking for new problems. This can be very frustrating at times because we'll find more problems than answers. And that's something that's frustrating because we want more answers as well. But that's something that requires a heck of a lot of creativity. And it seems like the more of these problems that we solve, the more of these problems that we find with no answers. So it's a repeating cycle. You have to be creative and you have to love it. You have to love to solve those problems. It's a defining aspect in my opinion, uh, because we love that, that that little itch we have that little itch inside of us that wants to that wants to solve a puzzle and it can be in many different forms as well it can be finding how that vulnerability types interact with a specific server can be how to upload your files in a specific way it can also be just uh, like a real puzzle it can be anything like for example i like screwing apart electronics and i like looking at how they work be very careful with that by the way don't go and screwing up anything with a high capacity um high capacity you see i i can't even remember the name you know things that are in microwaves and that kind of stuff and in old fluorescent tvs don't go messing about with that stuff but i'm always looking for those puzzles they're, they're really cool to me and that's what I enjoy and over time I learned to enjoy that process of discovering new pro puzzles, new problems and even solving them. So that's also a defining characteristics. On to the next one is to, at least for me, I always fight the established order and I don't mean by that anarchy, take up the pitchforks, hey, let's go and overthrow the government. No, that is definitely something you shouldn't do because in my opinion, it is trust but verify which matters here and that's something that i've read somewhere i'll never know i'll never i don't remember where it was but i'll never forget that sentence and it's something that 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 holds a lot of truth in it for me because of course i trust my gurus but i will always question them and by questioning i mean i will go i will google some of that information by myself I always want you guys to question my information as well. If something is incorrect, it's incorrect. We are all human, we are all making mistakes. So if we correct each other in a respectful manner, that is something that's going to help this world quite a lot. And one thing that hackers also have to be is a very competent in my opinion. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about scripting, it doesn't matter about um, whether you're talking about uh, the, the different traffic uh, types that can go over a network uh, when they're playing a beautiful song. I've noticed that a lot of these hackers are passionate about something and that they're really good at it. Like music is something that you guys are really good at, some of you. And some of you are really good, good with RC cars and all of that stuff. Some of you have beast computers. It's so cool to see. That some of you, everybody has their own competence in this specific niche that we're in already so that's definitely something that we all have to have to uh, like at least for me i think i would acknowledge this as general characteristics of hackers so now that we know that let's talk about some general steps that we need to know before we can become hackers 
because in my opinion a solid foundation is extremely important you're not going to build a house on a poor foundation either so i recommend that you learn html and possibly css as well now this is not directly going to be applicable to your hacking career but it will introduce you so to some of those much needed basics it's what the web is built upon and it's a great introduction language you don't have to create something um, extremely detailed it can be quick and visual in a couple of minutes and that's why i like it so much and if you really want that page to shine add some css in there now as for php that's some more backend stuff which will allow you and here's where the hacking comes in this will allow you to make those boring websites something that are that's data driven and has a logic in it and this is where you learn some of that logic that programming logic and that software development life cycle stuff that you need to pick up for later on same goes for python scripting is very important in my opinion if you have a boring task you need to be able to automate it let's say i have a specific curl call that i want to automate in, in a specific way i need to be able to do it quickly with python now what i recommend there is that you try and get yourself a like a project that you really need for yourself because that will keep your motivation up if you're working for something that you need instead of something that you will never use again so if you have for example a note application but the note application doesn't work like the way you want to create a new one why not just try it um so that's some of the general things that i recommend for you guys um, there are also some other things of course it's really important for me to learn how to run and use Linux and it might not be very obvious at first because you, in my opinion you can hack on every single uh, operating system so it doesn't matter whether it's uh, Linux or Windows or Mac OS but you're making it a lot harder for yourself if you're sticking to that Windows machine and also if you really want to get in depth it's much much easier to use Linux uh, to run Linux, to, to run your commands on Linux, to f find a way how to run most of those commands. Although, of course, um, in Windows these days, you also have the WSL or something like that, which is like a Linux shell. Um, but you need to know how to use Linux before you can use that as well. Now, if I say a specific command needs to be run and it's not available on Windows, you'll have to learn how to use Docker and all of that stuff. So definitely would recommend Linux there because it's a lot easier and you're going to have a lot more tutorials for it as well. A lot of people prefer hacking on Linux, so that's why there are a lot more tutorials. And of course, it's like, again, it's more open and it's more customizable. That doesn't mean you cannot hack on that Windows system or that macOS system that you treasure so much, especially macOS. They also are pretty good at that kind of thing because they're also Unix based, but Windows, that's going to be a bit tougher. Now, I also recommend that you learn the basics of networking. It's really important that you know what goes on within a network. You need to learn how packets are sent from one computer to another because there's going to be a time that you need to be able to analyze your traffic or at least packets because, for example, I was bug bounty hunting and I found a vulnerability, but it only had a packet tracer, um, oh sorry, a wire shark proof of concept in it. So I had to analyze the specific calls that were being made and I had to recreate it in a Python script to work for my target. I could also resend those packets, but I'm not good enough for that. So I just had to read them, look what was in them and learn a lot about packets in the process as well. I still learn a lot about these things every single day, but if you learn a little bit about the basics like TCP versus UDP, that's going to help you quite a lot. And then, of course, reading some hacking articles is also going to help you quite a lot. Because in like what we hackers do to learn is we read articles from each other. Everybody has their own specialization. And those articles, they're really cool to see new techniques and new insights on a, on a topic that we might be familiar with already. They really help us and they, they, they make it easier to understand what's going on. So now that we've picked the basics, now that we've covered the basics a little bit, now we need to choose a specialization. Because in my opinion, there are certain types of hacking and I'm going to cover a few 
not all of them are in here of course but you can do some research of your own because it's already getting quite a long video so um first of all uh, the web application hacking that is something that is very dear to me i love web application hacking that is my easiest topic for me at least i don't like boot to root machines as much i still do that boot to root challenge every now and again um but web application hacking it may seem like a narrow field but i can assure you there is tons of fields that you can diversify diversify yourself into you can become a web application pen tester uh, you can be a bug bounty hunter you can like for web application be a security architect there's many different things that you can go into here uh, and there's then in those fields there's also many different vulnerability types that you can go into like the cross-site scripting the insecurity serialization the, the csdi um, so many different things that you can go into for web application hacking alone same goes for network hacking because if you look at it really in depth you're looking at things like packets being sent from one place to the to another um, you're looking at things like um, how to secure your network with a firewall and an intrusion detection system you're learning how to hack a network from the inside out as well as from the outside out because of egress filtering and ingress filtering and all of these different new technologies. So network hacking definitely is a broad field as well. And don't let yourself get shied away from this field because it might seem too intense. It all builds up like, like a charm. And that's why I really like, um, like, like the network hacking stuff as well. Um, I've been there, I've done stuff like network based hacking um it's very technical it's a lot of fun but it's not something that i enjoy forever because it's super frustrating for me as well when i cannot get that one command to work i get very frustrated i got my cisco ccna certificate but i think that i forgot like 90 percent after getting that certificate so um, and one thing i wanted to cover on as well is so you've had your computer, you've been browsing some naughty websites that you shouldn't be browsing and suddenly it freezes up and it says, oh, I have a crypto locker on here. So I'm going to lock all of your personal files unless you pay me so much Bitcoin. Well, maybe you want to analyze that malware. Maybe you want to make a career out of analyzing that type of malware. So that's also something that's possible. There are man malware analysts out there. And it's not as common as the other types like penetration tester for example but it does exist so if that's something you're interested in don't let anything stop you just take one small step every day and in a year you will become an amazing hacker because it's hard to define hackers all we can do is define general properties but if you want to go very specific these are the things that make me consider hacker thank you very very much everybody for watching this video if you want to read the full article link is going to be in the description below and also again the instructions of how to get in front of one of the videos thank you so much my friends recently we also hit 25,000 followers on twitter which is insane to be we had 50,000 students my courses are going like crazy and i could have never expected this um i'm i'm almost crying in front of my computer again because you guys rock my world thank you so much have some cheese for everybody and i hope you have a good one bye bye amazing hackers see you later